Okay, this is video number 52, uh, and this is part two, uh, where we were considering this circuit that has a single current source, and we wanted to determine, we decided that we want to determine both the Stevenin equivalent circuit and its Norton equivalent circuit. In the previous video, we decided that the simplest way to proceed would be to first determine its Thevenin equivalent circuit. And in the previous video, we determined the Thevenin voltage to be 0.56 volts. Now what we have to do is determine the equivalent resistance. And what that is, to do that, um, you remove all current sources and all voltage sources from the circuit. Here we only have a single current source. So we remove this. Now there's no longer any current being supplied to the circuit. Then, with what's left, this right here, we ask ourselves, what would be the resistance of this circuit as seen across these terminals? And the way to imagine that is um, that this is open circuit now, so we can just get rid of this for the time being all together. So here's the circuit now. And we want to know if we were to measure the resistance of that circuit across these terminals, what value would we get? And imagine if we had um, put up the resistance meter across here, the potentiometer. And remember what that does is for the ohm meter, as we meant to say the ohm meter connected across the terminals, that puts out a very small amount of current. So we can imagine the current coming from here, going through the entire circuit, and then returning over at this terminal. Well, imagine then we have a small trickle of current coming from a ohm meter connected across here. Now that current, when it gets to here, it could go right through this resistor and return, or it could go through the series resistors of 1 and 5. So that would mean here we'd have a total resistance of 6, and that 6 ohm resistor would be in parallel with this 1.6 resistor. Another path it could take, once the current goes from here to here, it could go through this 4 ohm resistor, and return to here. So we have a situation where we have a 6 ohm resistor, a 4 ohm resistor, and a 1.6 ohm resistor. They're all in parallel with each other. So let's just draw it like that. 4 ohms, 1.6, and 6 ohms. And again, let's be clear about this. We imagine hooking an ohm meter across here. And the ohm meter is going to put out a trickle amount of current. And let's suppose it goes from this terminal, has to go through the circuit, then return to this terminal. So once it gets to here, it could go right across here. Or it could split along this path, which has a total resistance of 6 ohms. Or it could split yet down this path, which has a total resistance of 4 ohms. So the resistance of the circuit as seen across these terminals is the equivalent of these four resistors being in parallel with each other. So let's see what value that gives us. One over Rx will equal one fourth plus 1 over 6, plus 1 over 1 1.6. Would this be 1 over 1.6 to 1 and 6 tenths? That would be 16 tenths, or take the reciprocal of that, that would be 10 sixteenths. And let's see, this would be 
10 over 24 plus 10 sixteenths. Just working the fractions here and not doing anything particularly exciting. This would be 5 twelfths plus 5 eighths. And this would be equal to, let's see, we have 40 plus 60 would be 100. This times this plus this times this over this times this over 96. And that would be the same thing as 25 over 24. So we have 1 over our x equals 25 divided by 24. So our x is 24 divided by 25. And let's go to a calculator. That's very close to 0.96 ohms. So here then is the equivalent resistance of this circuit, or that this right here is the resistance of that circuit seen across these terminals. That is the equivalent resistance of this circuit here. And we can use this value of Rx when constructing either the Thevenin equivalent circuit or the Norton equivalent circuit. What we're going to do, as you know what the, the Thevenin voltage is, we determined that in the previous video. So let's very quickly for this circuit we say that the equivalent, the Thevenin equivalent voltage is 0.56 volts. That we determined in the previous video. And now the equivalent resistance is 0.96 ohms. So, Let's draw then the Thevenin equivalent of this. Here we have a voltage source, resistor in series. This is 0.56 volts. That's 0.96 ohms. So this circuit is the Thevenin equivalent of this circuit when considered across these terminals right here. Now what would be the Norton equivalent of that? Now we want to know then, and that's, we'll be asking then what would be the current that would be measured across these terminals with an ammeter. That is what the Norton equivalent current would be. And we can determine that from these values, I Norton just equals this divided by this. And I think that comes out to be like 0.58. Or now, if we set the problem up to determine this as our first step, that would mean then in this circuit, connecting an ammeter across here and asking ourselves what current value would that read? That it would read 0.58 amps. We could have determined that right from the beginning instead of determining this, but as you saw in video number 50, that would involve a lot more work. So that's why instead we determine the Thevenin equivalent voltage, first of all. Okay, now 
The Norton equivalent circuit then is our current source. And now our equivalent resistance is in series with that. Excuse me, in parallel with that. And then we have our terminals. This is 0.58 amps. And of course, this is the same. 0.96 ohms. So, for this bridge circuit, the Thevenin equivalent circuit is this. The Norton equivalent circuit is this. And again, as we explained at the beginning of the uh, previous video, um, it's easier to first determine this. And of course, this has to be determined whether we're going to decide to um, find out the Norton equivalent of this circuit as a first step or the Thevenin equivalent. This always is the same. It's always the same procedure. But for our circuit, it was easier to determine this as a first step than to determine this as a first step. Because if we're going to determine this as a first step, we would have to short circuit this and then ask ourselves, what's the current flow across there? That could be dumb, but it would be involved working with an awful lot of loop currents. So it was easier to determine this first, determine our Thevenin equivalent. Then from that, we can determine the Norton equivalent. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Um, I hope it was helpful. It takes a while to get used to working with these uh, equivalent circuits, but like anything else, it comes with practice. So come back, join us for another video, and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.